In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple button roll system. For example, here, I don't have any rolls, but as soon as I click on this button right here, it's then going to tell me that I have the roll, and here we see it right there. I can also click it again to remove it, as we see right here. I'm assuming that you already have a bot, and if so, this is how my index file looks. Yours might be different. Some important things to note is that I am connecting to a Mongo database. If you don't have a Mongo database, I have a tutorial in the description that shows you how to set one up for free. And I'm also specifying my test servers right here, which will be an array of guild IDs. That way we can create local slash commands and not global slash commands. Now I'm using TypeScript in the tutorial, but if you're using JavaScript, then all these files here will be using a .js file extension instead. And also you should import things how I specify here in the JavaScript imports. But because I'm using TypeScript, everything will be imported as TypeScript requires. I have a commands folder and a models folder. Inside the models folder, there is one single schema here. I'm first importing mongoose as expected, and then I'm specifying all the data I want right here. The primary key is going to be the guild ID. And then after that, I'm specifying a channel ID and a message ID. That way I can exactly identify which message is gonna have the buttons to attach the rules to. And then I'm also specifying the name of our collection right here. In this case, mine is button rules tutorial, but you can have yours be whatever you want. And then you want to export this depending on your language using the syntax right here. So this is how we're gonna keep track of the message that should have all the buttons attached to it. And there are two different commands we're going to make. The first one is going to be the button message command, which will actually send the message and then store that inside of Mongo. The next one will be the button roll command, which is going to add the buttons and handle the button clicks to give the rolls from that associated message. Now using one of keys commands, we need to export an object and all the information that is going to be associated with our command will be stored inside of that object. So of course we need to export an object based off your language, with JavaScript, that will be module to export equals this. And with TypeScript, it is export default object. And of course, we need to import our schema because we do plan on using that. And if you're using TypeScript, you also need to import text channel and I command from Discord.js and one-off keys commands respectively. Now the rest of this file will be very similar no matter which of those two languages you're using. At the start, we're going to specify a category and a description. Of course, you can add in whatever text you want for these. We are then going to specify this as both a legacy command that has a prefix in chat as well as a slash command that is built into Discord. We're going to specify guild only as true, so this cannot be ran in direct messages, which doesn't make too much sense for this use case anyway. And then here is test only as true. Now this is important because this means we are only going to be creating our slash commands in the test server specified here. Obviously you would enter your own guild ID right here. That way we're not waiting up to an hour for our global slash commands to register. And then of course, slash as both is going to create both a legacy and a slash command, and one of keys commands will handle all that stuff for us behind the scenes. Next, we want to specify what arguments we want. In this case, we want access to a channel and a message, and I'm specifying the type of objects we have right here. That way, when using slash commands, we actually get a drop down with all available channels, so the user can select one very easily. And obviously, we don't want everyone to use this, and there are many ways we can check the permissions, but a simple way will be just passing in required permissions as an administrator. Now finally, we have our callback function, and this will be ran every single time someone actually uses this command. We have an object that is passed in with a lot of different properties, but the things we want will be destructured as guild, message, interaction, and arguments. Guild is self-explanatory. Argument is going to be each individual argument as an element of a string array, and message will only be present if it was ran as a legacy command, and in a similar way, interaction will only be present if it was ran as a slash command. So the first thing we want to do is to remove the channel from the actual arguments array because we are going to manually get that from either the message or the interaction. But before we do that, we want to gain access to the text, which will be all the remaining text joined together with a space separating each element, basically taking the entire sentence or the entire string that the user wants to send and combining that into one single variable. We're then going to create a channel and this will be specified as a text channel. This colon text channel here is only required if we're using TypeScript. And then here, we're going to see if this was a legacy command or a slash command because message will only exist for legacy commands and it will not exist for slash commands. So if it was a legacy command, we can use message mentions.channels to get the first instance of the mentioned channel and then assign that to our channel variable. And if this was ran as a slash command, we want to do a similar concept, but in this case, it is interaction.options.getChannel. Now the as text channel right here is only required if you are using TypeScript. Next, we want to send the message in the channel and this is using await, so we need to make sure this function is asynchronous. And now that we've sent the message, we want to store the guild ID, the channel ID, and the message ID into our Mongo collection. 
the X mission point after guild right here is only required if you're using TypeScript. And then finally, we want to reply to the user. Personally, I only want to reply if I have to, which slash commands require me to. So if the interaction does exist, meaning we're using a slash command, I'm going to respond with an ephemeral reply, meaning that only we can see this reply and no one else can. And this will say message sent. Obviously you can change this text to whatever you want. But now this command here is done. So the last step we need is going to be the most complicated part. And that will be the button roll command, which will add the buttons and listen for the button interactions. So the first step is to import everything. And if you're using TypeScript, I don't recommend importing everything manually. Instead, as you need them throughout the code, you can use control space and go ahead and auto import those types. But obviously we will need access to our schema. So no matter which language you're using, go ahead and import that. Then here we have a couple constants. The first one being a button styles array with all the valid button styles as of recording this video, as well as a prefix and how both of these work will be explained further later on. So similar to the last command, we do need to export an object right here, which will contain information about our command. In this case, we're gonna have a category and a description, obviously add in whatever field you want there. And we have a very similar concept when it comes to the slash command registration. We want both a legacy command and a slash command only in our test servers and only for guilds. And similar to the last command, we're just specifying an administrative permission as required. But of course you can handle permissions however you want. Next, we have our different arguments. In this case, we want a minimum of four of them. So the first one will be the role, and then the emoji, the button style, and the button label. Now, as the types say, we now have access to a role and three different strings. And this allows this role right here to create a dropdown with slash commands so we can actually tag a specific role from a dropdown. Now, I want this button style to have a dropdown as well. And to do that within one of keys commands, we do have to pass in our own options object and specify everything. Normally this is done behind the scenes for us automatically, but in this case, I have some specific choices right here that I want to add. So I have to do everything manually in this situation. So the first two options, as well as the last one are very self-explanatory, especially if you've used this before. We just have a name and a description. We have the variable type and if it's required. But the third one here is where things actually get slightly different. Here we're passing in a choices array. And this is just going to be from the button styles array, which we see right up here with primary, secondary, success, and danger. Again, these are the different colors that we can add onto buttons as of recording this video. This will just use that array and then add it into an array of objects that will be accepted from the choices. So scrolling down further, here we have an init function, which I'll explain later on. Basically, this is going to handle all of the actual button interactions. But before I cover that, I want to go over the callback function here, which as you know, by this point will actually be ran whenever someone uses the button roll command. So the first step is to remove the role from the arguments array. That way we can actually get access to the role in a proper way and then have all the other string elements still intact. So this is a very similar concept right here to how we gain access to the channel earlier. Basically, we create our own role object and then we get access to that from either the message or the interaction, depending on if it was a legacy command or a slash command. Now, similar to before, the colon role right here, as well as as role right here, are only gonna be required if you're using TypeScript. You do not need to include those if you're using JavaScript. Next, we're getting access to the emoji. And here we're using args.shift, which is going to remove that exact element from the array and also return it. And then here we're getting access to the button style using args.shift. And here we have a fallback value of primary, just in case this does not exist. Then afterwards, we want to make sure that the actual button styles array contains whatever the user entered. So we're making the user input be converted to lowercase. And then we're going to check to see if that exists. And if not, we are then going to tell them that there's an unknown button style and what the valid styles are. Now, all these quotes here might look confusing. This will be easier to explain if I put everything on one line. Basically, I want there to be quotes right next to every single option. So primary, secondary, success, and danger. And so these quotes at the very start right here and at the very end are going to be the quotes we see at the very end and then at the very start of the string. But instead of just adding in a comma with the join function, I want to add in quote, comma, space, quote to create this string right here. If this is confusing, don't worry. Once you have everything done, go ahead and remove these quotes and see how it looks and then add them back and you should see a very clear difference. So at this stage, we've been using args.shift to remove everything and return it into their own variables, which means that everything left is going to just be the button label, which will be the actual text displayed on the button. Next, we're going to get access to the information from our collection, basically information on the message that the button should actually be attached to. And if that does not exist, we want to tell the user that no message was found and to create one using the button message command. Now we're returning with this so that way that the rest of the function doesn't work obviously. 
And so after this if statement, we now know that we have a valid information from the user, and we also have a valid message. So here we're going to get access to the channel ID and the message ID from the item in our collection. And then we're going to gain access to the channel. And obviously as text channel is only required if using TypeScript. But now that we have access to the channel, we can fetch the message from that. So within roll message, we now have the message that all the buttons should be attached to. We now want to access the rows, which will hold all the different components attached to this message. By default, this will be an empty array. But in this case here, we do have one row with one button in it. We can have five different rows and each row can hold up to five buttons. So we can have 25 different buttons. Now that we have access to the rows, I want to create a button right here. So I'm going to use new message button and chain together a couple different setter methods. At the start, I'm setting the label, which will just be the button label. Then we have the emoji and the style and then the custom ID. Now the emoji and the style, obviously I'm setting some types. And of course you only have to set the types for these variables if you're using TypeScript. But here we have a custom ID, which will be the prefix with the role ID added onto it. So this prefix variable is what I showed you earlier. If I scroll all the way up, here we see button dash roles dash. That way I can remove button roles from the actual string whenever the button is clicked. And I'm just left with the actual role ID to give to that user. So if I scroll back down, we now have access to a button and we also have access to the components for this message. So we want to add this button to the existing components. And there's two different ways we want to do this. The first is to add this to an existing row. The second is to add this to a brand new row in case there are no rows or all existing rows are full. Like I said, there can only be a max of five different elements per row. So I'm creating a variable here using let because I plan on changing this and this will be called added with a default value of false. I'm then going to loop through every single row. And if that exact row has room, basically meaning if there's less than five components, we then want to add the button to that row and then assign added equal to true. At this stage, the for loop has done its job so we can break out of it because future iterations of the for loop are basically pointless. And now afterwards, if we have not added the button, that means that there's either no rows at all or all existing rows are full. Either way, we want to create our own row. So if added is false, we first want to make sure that we actually have room to add a new row. Like I mentioned, we can only have five rows. So if the row's length is greater than or equal to five, we want to let them know that we cannot add more buttons. Afterwards, we can then add on a new message action row and then also add on the button to that row. Now, after both this for loop right here and this if statement right here, we now have the most up-to-date rows with all the buttons added. So we can edit our current role message to add on all those buttons. And then of course, we can respond by saying added button to the role message. So at this stage, we have the ability to add buttons to the actual message, but how do we actually interact with those buttons? Well, if I scroll up, but one of keys commands also has an init function, which we ran only once whenever the command is first initiated. So if I expand this, this is a perfect place to add on simple listeners that are associated directly with this command. We have access to a client here. And if you're using TypeScript, you might want to specify that this is going to be a client object. Obviously don't include this if you're using JavaScript. Now within here, I'm going to create a listener for interaction create. This will be ran whenever there's an interaction created, obviously. And there are a number of different types of interactions, but the only one we're interested in is button interactions. So if this is not a button interaction, we're simply going to return. Then afterwards, we're going to gain access to the guild as well as the custom ID for the button. Now, if the guild doesn't exist or the custom ID does not start with a prefix, which was initiated up here as button dash rules dash, then we want nothing to do with this button interaction. This means a button was clicked with a different feature. After these two if statements here, we now know that the user has actually clicked on a button associated with the button roles. This means that we can replace the prefix from the custom ID to get access to the actual role ID. And then we can also get access to the member. And of course, as guild member here is only useful if you're using TypeScript. So now we have access to the role ID as well as the member who actually clicked on the button. So we have an if statement here to see if the user already has the role. If so, we're going to remove that role and then send an ephemeral reply saying you no longer have access to the role. And the same exact concept applies in this else block right here. We're going to add the role and then tell the user they now have access to the role. And this is everything we need for this button role tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we can try it out one more time. Obviously, there's a lot more you can expand onto this when it comes to the user friendliness and customization. You could add a different command to delete different roles. You can add sub commands to do all of this within one single command. But to keep everything as short as possible for the YouTube video, this is a simple system that I selected. So here we have this one role. I can go into a general chat and I can say button role. I'm going to add on HTML, CSS videos. The emoji is going to be web for website development. The button style will be secondary. 
and the button label will be HTML CSS videos. It then says added button to roll message. And if I go over to roll claim, we now have this extra button here. As we can tell, I don't have any roles, but if I click on this, I now have access to the HTML CSS videos role. Now, obviously you can improve the system a lot further. This is just a simple version of button roles for the YouTube video, but you could add in the ability to remove buttons through a command. You could get rid of this response right here. There's a lot of things you could do to improve this, but this is a good starting point if you're interested in building this functionality. Want to improve your Discord bot even further? Click here to check out my other Discord tutorials.